I actually realized that for a long time I've had a great way to show everyone exactly how weatherproof a lot of graffiti paint sticks, metal heads, and even some graffiti mops are. And today I'm going to share that with you and we're going to be seeing exactly how weatherproof all of these graffiti mops, markers, paint sticks, etc. are in an outdoor environment, so let's get to that. So let me now introduce to you the all-knowing entity that will tell us exactly how weatherproof all of these different graffiti products are. Probably not what you're expecting, I bet. But I'll tell you the whole story. For the past eight or so years, we've reviewed over 60 different graffiti mops, markers, and paint sticks on the channel here. If you don't believe me, you can click the playlist of all our graffiti reviews we've done on the channel in the top right hand corner of your screen. But in a lot of these reviews, I've been using this rusty piece of dented metal as sort of a surface testing area, especially for the metal head steel tip graffiti markers and of course the solid paint sticks. In other words, all of the tags on this wheelbarrow are between two and eight years old and you can tell they're old because a lot of them were from when well my tags looked like that so I hope nobody starts crying in the comments about that but starting right now I'm going to tell you exactly which of these graffiti mops markers and paint sticks made each and every one of these tags and exactly how long the tags have been up exposed to the elements and that'll help tell you which formulae are truly weatherproof and which ones of these graffiti markers are not so weatherproof and please bear in mind this is a show of exactly how weatherproof these different formulae are not how buff proof they are that's a big big difference and this should help everyone decide which markers and formulae you're gonna want to be using to be getting tags up in those places that are exposed to the elements and probably aren't actively buffed. So first up let's take a look at a couple of the mops because I hear a lot of people talk a bit of smack about the formulae in these mops and how they're not too permanent and I think they've produced some surprising results in this scenario here. So first up this white tag was done with none other than the block by block standard mop. Probably didn't see that one coming. And you have to admit it still looks pretty clear. It's present, readable, and if you take a guess at how old this tag actually is, I think it'll surprise a lot of people. This one in particular is right now about four years and six months old, and it's holding up well enough. I've heard a lot of people talk about the block by block ink with sort of a negative connotation with regards to how permanent it is. For a white, it isn't too bad in my opinion here, at least in this particular scenario it's held up quite well but we'll be talking more about block by block and their ink formulae uh, a little bit later for a couple other reasons but moving on to this pink sort of non-style here <laughs> this comes from a mop that is near and dear to my heart and anyone who's followed the channel for any length of time knows that I never shut up about how much I love the mop that made this tag and those mops in general and that's because this tag was done a little over five years ago with this very mop here the in this case the mini 10 millimeter version of the grog squeezer but armed with full metal paint formula that they use today still this one was done in piggy pink with again this exact mop so I've, I've gotten over five years use out of this mop with a couple nib changes that's sort of cool so over the five years it has lost a bit of that vibrancy that it initially had of course which you should expect but overall it is holding up quite well and I credit that sort of thickness and the juiciness of the grog full metal paint formula for helping it stay there and have that stick to itness I guess you could say the grog full metal paint has been my go-to paint for several years now and I do have to say that it seems to when you when you're writing on metal glass freight metal it seems to dry gloss over and stick to the surface really really well in my experience using it so I guess if you do want to pick up any of the grog full metal paint I'll put a link in the description to where you can pick some up and if you do end up buying from any of the links that I have in my description it does go towards supporting the channel which of course I'm super grateful for that's how I can consistently make these videos for you guys so switching angles here on this sort of museum of tags if you will this next one here is one that was done just a little over five years ago again as well and it's another one that I think will surprise a lot of people and that is because it was done with none other than the Jenobo mop marker here in the video where I talked about the best graffiti supplies no longer sold on the market I talked a lot about the Jenobo mop marker and from the comments of that video regarding the Jenobo I got the sense that people really have sort of mixed 
mixed opinions about the Jinobo paint formula when they were making it, but at least in this case in particular, you can see that over five years, the color especially is what it, what's impressive to me. It's held up quite well, and really the tag overall looks almost as good as the day it was actually done, which to me is quite impressive. Granted, this is slightly less exposed to the elements than a few of the other ones on this wheelbarrow here, and slightly less exposed to the cement mixing <laughs> processes that we use this wheelbarrow for most of the time. But to entirely avoid fading in a sunny environment, that's pretty impressive to me. So at least in this scenario, the Jinobo paint has held up well. The Jinobo paint was never one that I used regularly, so I can't really speak to how weatherproof it is on a, a regular basis in every scenario, but at least here it did its job. So next up here, we have a very interesting group of mostly steel tip graffiti marker tags here. Anyone who used this marker back in the day knows that this three-dimensional sort of effect comes from nothing else besides the on the run slimer. I still have this exact one with the copper formula in it. Since they're so hard to get nowadays, I don't even know if they still sell them. I don't think so. I keep this one as sort of like a little collector's item, also because I never really found a use for this sort of out in the wild per se. But that being said, this tag here is four years and seven months old, and I can legitimately say that it looks just as good as the day that it went up. This is on there, it's solid, and it obviously hasn't lost any of the color. Like you can see, it's the exact same color clearly. And this was one of the only formulae on the graffiti market ever, I think, that was three dimensional enough that rust just would have no effect on it whatsoever, which I thought was great, which is something that you'll definitely notice isn't exactly the case for some of the other steel tip or sort of thicker three-dimensional paint formulae that we'll be getting to in a bit. For example, in that regard, this orange tag here is a grog metalhead tag that was done five years and one month ago. To be fair though, most of the reason you're just barely seeing any of it is because all of this paint has since fallen off since the tag was done, but we're going to be getting back to the grog metal head later and the rough stuff paint that it comes in, so I won't talk too too much about this right this second. But there is a tag up here that you actually can't even see anymore, and it was done five years and two months ago with a block by block correction pen. I bet some people don't even know that they sold correction pens, at one time they did, and although it was done on a wet surface, I am still surprised that there's no trace of it whatsoever. This other tag, I actually am totally stumped about <laughs> what what I did it with, it looks a little more recent and it sort of does have that look of like a day low, so I'm pretty sure it's a day low marker tag, or it could have been some product in a video that just never aired on my channel, but it does look a little more recent than the others. Frickin' cardinal, making all kinds of noise. But onto the next face of our sort of rusted over metal surface here. This one's an interesting one, it's where we start getting a lot of the solid paint sticks and that sort of thing that we're gonna be looking at. These first two, and this one, third one, Dykem Daylo steel tip tags were done two years and four months ago. The one done on rust here seems to be fighting a bit of a losing battle to sort of stick around, whereas the one done on just straight painted metal seems to be doing just fine. But to be honest, two years and four months actually isn't that long, so it's a little surprising to see it struggling. I must have put sort of a thinner layer down of that one than say this one though, but even this one, it would have been done at the same time. You can see the rust taking effect a little bit. It is being a little bit washed out. And I'm actually sort of surprised considering the industrial nature of the Daylo marker. It's never really been mainly associated as a graffiti product. It's always had that industrial sort of marketing associated with it. And actually going back to something I said earlier, I don't know if you guys can see the bit of red here, but that is remnants of a tag that was done five years and two months ago with block by block ink in the red color. And as you can see, it's almost entirely faded out. Granted, some more of the paint has chipped off as well for that, but that leads me to believe, I don't know, maybe there could be some variation in the batching that block by block does, or maybe they use different types of dyes to dye their ink, something like that, that could produce the different results between the white and the red. I bought them around the same time, so they should be as close to the equivalent formulae as you can get, but obviously the red here held up significantly worse, being up for around the same amount of time as the one done in the white block by block ink. So you're seeing this orange sort of tag again, and that is, of course, the rough stuff paint that comes in these grog metal heads, which would have also been done about five years and one month ago, and honestly, it's fading out pretty significantly, I do have to say, and don't get me wrong, five years is a long time, but I guess this is a good time 
time for me to bring up that in my personal experience I have found that the rough stuff paint does not seem to stand up quite as well as the grog full metal paint formula in general that being said obviously though both of them are fairly weatherproof when you compare them to a couple of the other things we've looked at today so the rough stuff paint is probably right in the middle of the pack in terms of weatherproofness but considering it is a thicker formula I think that's a little bit poor usually the thicker formulas you should expect a bit more of the grasping of the surface with them they seem to be quite good at that generally so I don't know overall it's a little disappointing to see especially because I love the look that you can get with the rough stuff paint you get the very three-dimensional drips with that formula so a little disappointing moving on to the solid paint sticks though the drink solid marker made this tag here almost two years and three months ago and it's obviously perfectly intact and very permanent just like every other paint stick on the market but in the video where I talk about the worst graffiti supplies I had some harsh words to say about crank and given that nobody contradicted me in the comments about that in particular I have a feeling the graffiti community in general doesn't really like paying around ten dollars for a solid paint stick that's just as permanent as every other solid paint stick on the market I don't know you guys tell me speaking of other solid paint sticks though that are not ten dollars and just as permanent here we have the Sakura streaker in white that Sakura tag was done roughly two years and three months ago also but sadly I do not have a Sakura streaker right now because the last one I had well this is what happened I was on my bike Sakura in pocket I reached down to get my Sakura for you know some business to attend to and then no more Sakura no, but seriously, the Sakuras are great markers. They seem to be loved by everyone, and I don't see why they wouldn't be. I love them as well. If you do want to save some money on Sakura markers and buy them in bulk, I actually will put a link. It'll be the first link in the description to where you can pick up a pack of these, either all in white or the different colors of them. For the best price I have actually found for Sakuras anywhere, buying that in bulk actually does seem to make that difference in this case. So you might want to check that out. It makes Sakuras pretty affordable for sure. So now is probably a good time to tell you that the main purpose of this wheelbarrow for the past like long time has been mixing cement. So anything on the inside of this that was tagged has taken a hell of a beating over and over again, which is why it's impressive that there's any kind of coloring left to show you guys here. That being said, there were some Mark Albee paint stick tags done on the inside of this wheelbarrow that took a beating and did not survive. But even though they did not survive, I still want to emphasize that the Mark Albee paint sticks are my go-to paint sticks and they always have been even over the sakura streakers not because they're more or less permanent but just because you can't beat the buttery smooth feel of a markal riding on smooth heated metal the sakura gives you that sort of sticky feeling whereas even though these are cheap it just gives you that nice buttery feeling that you cannot beat in my opinion if you do want to know more about the legendary markal b paint sticks i will put a link to a full review and surface tagging test with the markal b paint sticks that we did it's one of the newer reviews so it's a good one check out i'll also link in the description to where you can buy a bulk pack of either the white markals or a colored group of markals as well and these bulk packs legitimately are the cheapest price i've been able to find where you can buy markals at all so in this case buying bulk really does save you a hell of a lot of money and being that buying these in bulk does save you a lot of money generally even if you use these like semi-regularly which i think most writers probably do it's it's a good idea to buy in bulk. Once upon a time there was a Crank K90 steel, that's a steel tip marker tag here. There's a couple little bits of it left, but nothing to see there really. I don't really have anything to say about this thing, and it's not really a favorite of mine. These last two sort of bits of red are really where it gets interesting here though. In 2019, I did a surface test on here with the Molotow scroll stick. It did not last at all on the outside of the wheelbarrow on one of the faces we looked at you couldn't even tell it was there although I did do it while the surface was wet so I'm certain that played a factor in it lasting there still sort of disappointing though considering this is supposed to be something that bleeds into a surface a little bit but that being said it has managed to leave a little bit of a mark withstood again those cement mixing processes on the inside of this wheelbarrow so not really enough to see what's going on there but there is 
is something there which in its own right is impressive enough but what i can truly say is something special is the crink k66 or just the formula that comes in the crink k66 and thus also the crink k60 the mop marker although these tags here are only about two and a half years old again they have actually legitimately withstood entire cement mixing processes and they're still pretty much readable tags so you know what i'll leave a link to where you can pick up a crank k66 for yourself if you want and i guess because i have the k90 a k90 as well i suppose you can check a review out of the crank k66 or the k60 in the corner of the cards as well if you're looking to know more about those so in all seriousness though a lot of graffiti writers seem to get wrapped up in the whole how permanent is it type thing which to me sort of sounds a little funny because once you try out enough different graffiti mops markers all that sort of thing you start to realize that generally products that are made for graffiti writers are going to be able to withstand pretty significant weathering and additionally no matter how permanent something is if the buff man or woman wants to get it off he or she can find something that will buff pretty much any of these products it's just how chemistry works there's things that remove other things so i don't really like to get wrapped up in the whole how permanent is something discussion so in my experience at least it's mostly just not worth worrying about for me the fun part of graph is being involved in the process and seeing the final product of the work not necessarily seeing a ghost of a tag that someone tried to remove but that's just me no doubt you guys have some opinions on that that you're putting below in the comments and feel free to leave a comment about what you like about graph in that regard i'll definitely read it give you a thumbs up show some love all that jazz and just remember guys there really is no right or wrong answer about what you should do in graffiti what markers you should use why you should be doing graffiti so don't let anyone else tell you otherwise because there's a lot of uh, people within specifically the graffiti community that seem to think they can dictate what other writers do what kind of graffiti they do all that sort of thing especially those who claim to be like the old school writers right and when you're dictating the type of graffiti that you think other people should be doing, if I'm being honest, it just makes you look stupid. So just as a bit of general advice for writers of any level, make sure you're always doing your own thing and doing what you actually enjoy rather than what someone else is telling you you should be enjoying or doing. And also don't get caught being one of those people trying to dictate what graffiti is about because again, it, you, you really do just look stupid. So instead of doing that, maybe check out some more of the videos on the channel and Dead. Some of my best videos will be on screen right now for you to check out, as well as a playlist specifically comparing some of the best graffiti mops, if that's something you want to take a look at. I'll hope to see you over there in one of those videos shortly. Until then, peace.